In this seemingly now unassuming neighborhood in Chicago's north side, used to lie one of the world's most dangerous housing projects, also known as Cabrini Green. See, back when Cabrini Green was first being developed in the 1940s, absolutely no one knew the nightmare it quickly become for the city. See, many people tried to save Cabrini Green over the years, with one mayor in 1981, Jane Byrne, even trying to live there but she only made it a week due to just how dangerous this section of the city was at the time. The city had multiple plans to try and save it, but failure after failure with reviving the public housing project led the US to describe public housing as a failure as a whole due to just how bad Cabrini Green failed. Calling Cabrini Green a failure is a massive understatement. Everything that could possibly go wrong with this building seemingly went wrong with it. Everything was just falling apart, it hadn't been taken care of in years, and it was just a mess. And because of all this, Cabrini Green became a figurehead for that belief as people described its stone-covered fronts and falling apart structures as looking war-torn in third world in comparison to the rest of the city. So finally in 1995, demolition of the projects began, with the final tower coming down in 2011. And just like that, the projects that once lined from Division all the way down to Chicago Avenue were just gone within a decade. Now all that remains of the Cabrini Green projects are the row houses that are lined along Cambridge Avenue and Mohawk Street. Frankly, the city will probably never try with public housing ever again just due to how badly Cabrini Green and the other surrounding projects failed. And for me personally, I think there was just something frankly horrifying about the living conditions that people were forced into in these buildings with many of the rooms looking frankly horrific, like something you would see in a prison with their cinder block facades and chain fence hallways. The living conditions of Cabrini Green were some of the most inhumane that the US has ever seen in modern history, along with the nearby Robert Taylor homes that were nearby, and the treatment towards residents by the city was even worse, as the city refused to do anything to fix it and just gave up on it as a lost cause. The city quickly brushed this dangerous section under the rug as they replaced the dangerous section with expensive housing which would become known as the New City, a mall and apartment center to the nearby Gold Coast and Lincoln Park, two extremely affluent areas that are very very expensive to live in in the city. But truly after all this history you may be asking me what does this have to do with Candyman? Well before answering that I have to say remember to like and subscribe. If you like this video comment down below your thoughts on it and let me know even if you didn't like the video down below. Just like let me know anything that you thought about the video and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and let's continue. For those who haven't seen it, Candyman follows Helen, a grad student who makes a project on the local urban legend of Candyman, an evil ghost that haunts and kills people who live in the Cabrini Green projects in Chicago. The film follows Helen as she explores the projects in search of facts on the elusive Candyman that her paper is about for her grad school. But however things quickly go awry as she begins to be haunted by the ghost herself as she sees Candyman following her around throughout the whole building that she's in. Ghost wants her to be his next victim, which the ghost says over and over and over again throughout the film, drawing her back into the Cabrini Green projects that she was just so afraid of earlier on in the film. Eventually he starts killing people and framing her for it. After killing one of the resident's dogs, her friend, and the psychiatrist at the local hospital she is sent to after people all assume that she's crazy and that she's lost it. And this all culminates in a candy man kidnapping a baby, which Helen has to recover from a trash fire that the local Cabrini Green residents are burning in front of the building as a way to essentially burn candy man out. They think that he's within the trash fire, so this is their way of trying to get rid of and kill him and keep him out of the building essentially. However, Helen has to give up her life in order to save the child as she is caught up in the flames of the trash fire and then becomes an evil spirit herself, which she uses to kill her husband, Trevor, who has seemingly been wanting her out of the picture for the whole film. So how does this horror film besides the location relate to the horrors of Cabrini Green and other projects like it? Well, I think it relates to it by showing off the way of life within the projects to an extremely realistic degree. No one in this film is truly safe, just like many of the residents of Cabrini Green were unsafe themselves when they were in the building. The film just truly shows what life in Cabrini was like in such a way that many other films were unable to replicate due to the fact that they filmed in the actual building for this movie. They didn't just build a set for it, they actually filmed here. They actually showed what it was like on the inside instead of just talking about it and showing like sets of it. For example, just to film inside the building, they had to pay off gangs inside the building, so they were able to film in the building without any issues, because if you didn't pay them, there was a high chance that people would get hurt. 
shootings happened constantly in this building like people would die constantly it was every day there would be something that would happen it was so common that there was a certain point where almost one person died every single night shootings were rampant it was insane especially in the 90s when this movie was filmed it was at its highest point it was at its most dangerous when they were filming here which is crazy that they actually filmed here without any problems and for one of the examples one of the film's stories that's used in the film was a real story that happened. The story of the lady who gets her home broken into through a mirror that's connected to two of the rooms was a real story. This really happened. Someone died that way. It's really real stories of what happened to these people. So the Candyman urban legend doesn't stand out too much. It sounds like something that would be real in this building just because of how death and destruction in this building was just so extremely common. It was just commonplace there. It fits in with the setting and it fits in with how things are shot around this movie. And with the way the building was set up, it was essentially one big death trap as you were most likely going to get killed. Uh, for example, one of the documentaries that you can watch that talks about how if you went to the elevator, for example, it was a death trap. Almost everyone that went into that elevator would die. So it just shows just how dangerous it was. There was just no chance of people living. So the Cabrini Green story makes sense for the Candyman story because it just is like a level of death is just hanging over this building. You can't escape it. Some capture just how perfectly terrifying these buildings were as the buildings were extremely dangerous and the real life horror of the building are just as terrifying as the urban legend of Candyman. And the Candyman urban legend itself is also very believable and fits perfectly with the building as the story is just real enough sounding that it could fit with many urban legends that we have in real life. With the one it really seems like being of course Bloody Mary which is done with the exact same rules which is say her name four times. I think in the movie it's five times but it might be a little bit different but it's essentially just Bloody Mary so it's pretty believable it fits in with what we conceive as a urban legend for the story. So it just kind of fits. It's just a little unique touch to make the urban legend that just more believable. And the film itself is also horrifying for the fact that Candyman is such an existential evil. He is almost like the grim reaper of the building and a looming figure of death over the building that just had so much death and destruction inside of it. It was just almost like Candyman represents the building himself. He is the death and destruction of Cabrini Green. It's just Candyman representing all of that in one. And it just shows just how bad life was in there just by through a urban legend. I think one of the scenes that really stands out to me about the horrors of Cabrini and Candyman is the scene where Helen is exploring an abandoned apartment where the murders occurred in the film. The one that occurred earlier that they talked about with the mirrors, they go and explore the, the apartment that it happened in and you can see just how destroyed this apartment is and it's just an awful sight. It's falling apart, it doesn't look good whatsoever, it's just destroyed, it's empty, just like the buildings would later become themselves. Just completely destroyed, nothing left. And the film shows Helen metaphorically walking through the window into the world of Candyman, which shows the huge mural that is painted within the room that she sees that she goes through the mouth of, almost going through the mouth of madness to go through that. And she has to go through the mouth of Candyman where on the other side we see this huge mural of all the chaos that he has caused. And also a little bit of his backstory where we see that he was murdered as a slave on the lands of Cabrini. So it's really fitting. And it's such a creepy image of the mural as it's just something that just shows everything that we need to know about the figure and just how much of a bringer of death and destruction Candyman truly is. But it also adds a layer of tragedy to the character as we see that he was essentially executed. And in the sequels we see even more of this as we see that he was killed for essentially no reason and it just brings a layer of tragedy to the story, almost like the buildings themselves, which were a being of tragedy as well, where it was just essentially, uh, it should have been something that worked well, public free housing, but it failed miserably because the U.S. didn't fund it correctly. So essentially, I see Candyman like the buildings themselves, a bringer of chaos and destruction, but also a tale of tragedy. It's just something that could have all went better, but it just didn't. And the walls also show just how hollow the building is with every room being accessible to one another, showing just how awful the living conditions were, which leads to Helen finding out that her own building has the exact same future behind the mirrors, showing that nowhere in this film is truly safe whatsoever. And overall, I think the film shows just how horrifying life was inside of that building and that no matter what people would do, they were trapped into this building of death and destruction. I think Candyman himself is a perfect representation of that. Candyman is that death and destruction. He is the evil that is within the building. 
it's him, but it's also just such a tragic story as the building itself is a tragic tale. What happened in that building is very tragic. And it's very sad what happened to that building to this day. And with that, that is the end of the video, and I hope you guys all enjoyed it, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful week. And I, remember, that if you liked it, remember to like and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a great week. I will see you guys next week.